Today, we are diving into the exciting world of text animation in After Effects. Get ready to take your creativity to new heights as we explore the techniques and tricks to master captivating text animations. Whether you are a beginner or a seasoned pro, this tutorial will help you with tips that will have your text popping off the screen. So let's jump right in and unlock the power of text animation in After Effects. Here in After Effects, the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new composition. That is Control or Command N. And I will name it Text Animation. And 1920 by 1080 is good and everything is good. All right, so now that I have my composition, I'm going to type some text. And for that, I'm gonna use the Type tool. The Type tool is here, and if you click and hold, there are two. There's the horizontal type tool and the vertical type tool. I'm just gonna use the horizontal. So let's go ahead and choose the horizontal type tool. To type the text, I can do it in two different ways. I can click and drag, creating a text box. So I click and drag, and then I can type, or, and see, immediately a layer got created in the, in the timeline. So I'm going to delete that or I can simply click and then type. That will create point text. So I can click and then type. But, and now I'm gonna type, type uh, gibberish. If I keep on typing and typing and typing and typing and typing, the, the letters don't wrap to the le next line unless I press the enter or return key. So that doesn't happen with a text box. If I do a text box and then I type, and I'm just again gonna type gibberish, do you see how the new lines are created automatically? So at the end of the day, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, although I don't know a single designer that won't create a text box and most video editors will create point text. So neither here nor there doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to create point text because I'm going to just type one word. I'm gonna type the word text. So I'm going to just click and then type the word text. As soon as I do that in here on the right hand side of the screen, some panels opened up. So this is the newer version of After Effects. So I have the properties panel in here. I can transform the layer here as in an anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. We're not really going to do that. So uh, I can now change things like font, the font style, the size, the loading, the kerning, the tracking, all of that good stuff. So let's start with the font. I'm going to select all of the characters simply by double clicking the word. If I wanted to select an entire paragraph, I triple click and it selects it. So here we go. I can simply scrub this value to make the font larger. I can change the font simply by going here and changing it to whatever. I am a Verdana girl, so there you go. Speaking of fonts, uh, I'm sure you already know that you have access to Adobe Fonts. And for that, you need to go to the Creative Cloud uh, um, app. So let's go ahead and do that. Here in Creative Cloud, uh, go to Manage Fonts, and these are the ones that I actually have active in this system. I can click on this button for Browse for More Fonts, and that it's going to open my browser, and it's gonna take me to fonts.adobe.com, and here I can search for any font that I want, and I can simply install it in my system. So there are so many fonts, it's not even funny. So you can search for fonts, you can, whatever. One of the ones that I use a lot is the Bebas. Bebas Nui Pro, I guess that's how it's pronounced. And I have most of those already installed in my system. So I can simply activate it. Say this one, the Bebas Nui Pro regular, I can simply activate it. And it's going to be active in my Creative Cloud apps. So going back to After Effects, 
I can simply go to Bebas and there it is, Bebas Nuit Pro. And I, I only downloaded the, the regular, but if I go to one of the other ones, then I can have book, regular, and bold. I really like uh, the, the bold. Anyway, neither here nor there, that's how you install the Adobe fonts, and that is how you change the fonts here in After Effects. Changing the size of the font is very easy. You can simply scrub the number or you can type in the number, and then we have the letting. The letting is simply the distance in between the lines. So if I press enter and I have another line and I'm going to grab my move tool and, you know, maybe I think there's too much space in between these two lines. I can simply change that value from auto to whatever, or I can simply scrub the number until I am happy with the distance in between the lines. So letting is the distance in between the lines. Then comes this value here for the kerning. The kerning is the distance between two characters. So if I have the word text in here, like text, like that, and then I make the letter T much larger, say like that, and this is good. I'm going to have my vertical size a little bit shorter. There you go. There is now too much distance between the T and the E, so I can put my insertion point right there in between the T and the E, and now I can change the kerning so that the distance between the letters becomes a little bit more visually appealing. All right, so then we have the tracking, which is really the distance in between all of the characters. If I simply select the layer and then I change this, I can change the distance between all of the characters. All right, so uh, then I have the fill. Uh, I don't have to have it white. I can make it red, green, blue, yellow, orange, whatever color I want by simply clicking on that uh, um, swatch there. I can also pick the color from the background or whatever using the eyedropper. I can also select to have a stroke or not simply by clicking here. And just so that we can see it, I'm going to change the stroke to a horrible red. And then, of course, I can change the width of that stroke and then look at the corners. So I can have uh, the line join of the stroke be miter, be round. And if we zoom in, you will see the difference between those two. See how that's a corner and that's like more roundy. And then I can have a line join bevel. You can see it right in here. I personally don't like strokes in, in letters, in text, uh, but I do understand that sometimes they are more than necessary for you to be able to read the message a little bit better. So just for now, I'm going to uh, deselect this. Uh, but, oh, one more thing. See where it says stroke over fill, fill over stroke, or so all fills over all strokes. So you can change the, the, the display if the fill is over stroke or if the stroke is over fill. And the reason for that is because notice that if the stroke is over the fill and you change the width, it changes equally between the inside of the stroke and the outside of the stroke. So in other words, it goes on top of a letter. While if you have a fill over stroke, then it's only becoming larger outside of the letter. So that's kind of an important uh, design distinction to make in here. All right, so let's keep on going. I'm going to uh, again deselect the stroke because I don't want it. And then we have in here like the horizontal and the vertical scale. This is the vertical scale here. I changed it for the T. And then you have the horizontal scale. So, you know, if nothing is selected, it does it for the entire word. And in here, since the, the values are not even, and now I change it, now it's changing the values evenly. All right, so if we keep on going, you're going to see the baseline shift. If I select these three, I can actually change the vertical. So the baseline, in other words, the, the, the vertical uh, where, where they are 
uh, so I can change that. And then, of course, uh, you have the tsume or tsumi, depending on, on how you want to pronounce it. And this is also, this is kind of like the, 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 the tracking. So it does the distance in between the characters. Then you have the fall style. So you have the all caps. You have the small caps. You have the superscript, the subscript. You have ligatures. Of course, that's not going to work on this. And you have the hind digits. Notice that there's three dots here and then the word less. I can see less options or I can see more options. Then, and this is kind of uh, um, uh, self-explanatory, but I'm going to show it anyway. We have the paragraph here and let me show more. So you can have it left aligned, you can have it center aligned, right aligned. You can have indent the left margin. Of course, we only have one line here and I'm just going to go through this very, very quickly. You can add a space before the paragraph. You can indent the right margin. You can add a space after the paragraph. And then, of course, you can indent the first line of the paragraph. Um, you can uh, do go left to right. Uh, and because we are in the United States, that's how we write. But not all countries write like that. So if you're doing anything in Arabic or Hebrew or whatever, then you want to go from right to left. Uh, finally, uh, you can turn point text into paragraph text simply by clicking here. This is point text. And if I want a text box, all you have to do is click on here. And now notice that what we have is a text box that when we change the scale of it, what we're doing is changing the text box and not the text size. Look at the difference if this is point text and then I change this here. What I'm doing is I'm changing the size of the text because there is no text box. All right, so there you go. You can turn from one to the other simply by clicking here and that's brand new in After Effects. All right, so let's go ahead and expand the text layer in the timeline. In here, you're going to see the first thing is the text property, which you can expand by clicking on this little carrot here. And the first thing you're going to have is the source text. Right now, I mean, if we wanted to change the source text, we could do it simply by typing something new. We can also keyframe this. These would be hold keyframes. There's not going to be like a gradual one letter turning into another. It's first it says text. Let me add the keyframe. And then it's going to say, I don't know, animation. And I'm going to turn this back into a text box. And I'm going to make this smaller. And of course, animation. And I'm going to change that scale. And there you go. So I have two keyframes. I have the word text and then I have the word animation and they're hold keyframes. Again, there is no interpolation. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that. And let's go ahead and add an, uh, some animation to this. So if you keep on going down the line here in the timeline, you're going to see that the first option that you have is for text on a path. So it tells you path options. So what are we going to do with these path options if we don't have a path? See how it says path? A path is a mask. A mask is a path. For this, they are interchangeable. I get it. They're not the same thing. A mask produces transparency. All right. So I get it. But for After Effects, for this particular thing, they're one and the same. So let's go ahead and add a mask to this layer. And we're going to do it using the pen tool. So select the layer, click on the layer, and then grab the pen tool. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And then I'm just going to click here. I'm going to click and drag to the right here. And I'm just going to click here. So I just have a little curve thing here, right? So, okay, now, we are going to go to the path options and the path, yes, it says no, but if you click here now, it's going to give you the option of mask one. And as soon as you choose mask one, your text is going to jump to that path. Not only that, but you're going to get five properties in the timeline that you didn't have before. These are reverse, the reverse path, perpendicular to path, etc., etc. 
Let's just very quickly go through these. I'm going to make this column a little bit longer so you can see it. So the reverse path, you can turn it on or off, and this is self-explanatory. Perpendicular to path is also self-explanatory. It's like you can have the characters be perpendicular to the path or not. You know, I've never used these not being perpendicular to the path. So there you have it. Force alignment. I'm thinking self-explanatory too. Look at this. It's like it takes the entire width of the path or not, right? So first margin. Look at this. You can definitely see how this animation is going to occur. And then, of course, the last margin, if you click and drag, nothing happens. The reason nothing happens is because if you look at the paragraph, you're going to see that this is left aligned. If this were center aligned, then both my first margin and my last margin will, would work. And if this were right aligned, then only the last margin will work. So, you know, it's however you want. But there is one thing that you should remember, and that is if the force alignment is on, both of them work. And you can actually squish all of your characters right here in the middle. You could keyframe them both and then separate them like yay. And even select those keyframes and go animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Remember that's an F9. And now you get beautiful text animation like that. All right. You can also interpolate the mask itself. For example, you can select the layer, press M for mask and say the animation ended here. You could keyframe that and you can now uh, change these properties. So for example, say I want to change this to go here. I want to change this to go here. So it's a straight line. Notice how the text will follow it along as well. So it opens up and now it's going to follow the animation of the path. So that's kind of cool. So text on a path, not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the text on a path and I'm going to leave the word animation in. Notice where the anchor point is, is on the left. And that's because this is left aligned. If this were center aligned, then it's, it's going to be at the baseline. So at the bottom, but it's going to be in the middle and right align. It's going to be on the right hand side. Just for now, I'm going to leave it on the left side. All right. Now we're going to add animators. So I'm going to show less here and I'm going to show less here and let's add an animator. You can do it right here using the properties panel. See this little plus sign? You can click here and let's add an animator for position. Why not? So I'm going to add this animator here and then I'm going to do the rest in the timeline. They're one and the same. It's just two different interfaces. I really love this new properties panel because it makes things a little bit easier to, to deal with. And, you know, but if you don't want to use it, you can do stuff in the timeline anyway. All right, so let's add an animator for position where you're going to get something called animator one, which you can rename to rename almost anything in After Effects, select it and then press enter or return and then type in the new name. I'm going to type in position animator. And yes, I need to learn how to type. Let's fix that to animator. And there you go. And then I have a position that is 0, 0. Well, we have learned that 0, 0 is top left. This text is not top left. Not even the anchor point is top left of the composition or even the, the type. So what does this value mean? Well, let's take a look. Here we go. If I press Shift P, look at the value for position. It's 646 uh, by 590. That is where this anchor point is with respect to my uh, composition. So this value is given to you in respect to this value. So the position animator, that value, is given to you in relation to transform position. If the animator position is at 0, 0, it means that the animator 
and the transform position are in the same place. But look what happens when I change the animator. The anchor point remains here, so this position value didn't change, but the animator now, it says, is 248 above where it was. So its value is minus 248. It's exactly 248 pixels above transform position. But at this point, you should be asking yourself, why do I want to do this when I could just animate position? Ah, here comes the rub, because of the range selector. The range selector is this, these three values, start, end, and offset. And now I'm going to turn the transparency grid so you can see this a little bit better. And I am going to show you this vertical line here at the beginning of the word and this vertical line here at the end of the word. The vertical line on the left side of the word refers to start, the start value. Look what happens when I put my mouse cursor right here in the middle of the, the vertical line. If you don't see this vertical line, expand and click on any of these properties in the range selector, then you will see it. Look what happens when I move the mouse cursor here. Do you see how it changes to like this black arrow with this like weird looking tail thing? I can now click and drag the line. Look at the value. Now it changed to 11%. Now it changed to 22 da, 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 all the way to the left. So I can animate this value. I can animate it. And here is the rub. Only the characters that are in between those two lines get affected by this value for the animator position. So I could now change this value to say a lot more, say go off the screen, and I can now keyframe, say, the start, which is the left line, so that it begins at zero and it ends at 100. I'm going to kill the transparency grid. And now my characters are going to come down one at a time, starting with the first A. OK, I could delete those, right? I could go back to this value being zero. I can now keyframe the end line so that it begins at 100 and it ends at zero. And as that line moves left, the letters start dropping in one by one, starting with the last letter. Because it is where these vertical lines are that determines which characters get the animation. So the reason why we don't keyframe the transform position is because that would take the entire layer, in other words, all of the characters, up or down or whatever, while in here, if we change it, the range selector tells us which characters get the quote-unquote effect and when. And that gives us really interesting animations. So let's go ahead and delete that uh, animator. And let's add another animator. So let's do that here in the timeline. Do you see here next to the word text? To the right of the word text, you have this animate. You can click here and let's add now an animator for scale. Perfect. Let's animate scale so that it becomes larger. There you go. I love it. All of them are becoming larger, but let me just show you this. Do you see how there is this little X at the bottom middle of each letter? That's the anchor point of the letter. And as they become bigger, they all become bigger on that anchor point. It's amazing. That's why the letters are looking like they are smooshing each other like that. Well, I can now change this animator by changing the range selector so that it is only around the letter A. Look at it, now only the letter A becomes larger. And I can say, hey, you know what, as it becomes larger, and I really like this animation, blah, 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 as it becomes larger, I want it to move to the left. Fantastic, you can do that. 
you can select the animator and do you see here where it says add? You can click there, add an animator for position, right? So here it is. And now we're going to change the position so that it is here. And now the same range selector that is affecting the, uh, the letter A, it's also affecting it for position. But I need to keyframe position. Fantastic. Keyframe it there. Go back to the previous one and then reset it. Reset it. You can reset any value in After Effects. If you right click on the word, on the name of it, and then choose reset. So I said effect that's actually for any property. You can reset it. Any property that is keyframable. Here we go. Now, as it becomes bigger, it's also moving, but it's actually invisible to the viewer. It's just becoming bigger without smooshing the other letters. And now you can say, oh, it would be great if the A and the N are that. Fantastic. Here you go. And then you can go, oh, no, I didn't mean that N. I meant this N. Oh, okay. Fantastic. You can add another range selector. How cool is that? You can add another range selector and now you can go and have the other range selector be around that letter N only. Look at that. I love it. Of course, of course. The letter N is now also moving to the left and we don't want that. So I'm going to undo this a couple of times because, you know, I don't want, I just want this. I can select this animator one and I can copy and paste it or I can duplicate it. So select it, control or command D. Now I have an animator two and now oops, I can change this range selector so that it goes around the other letter N and now press the letter U and you have two positions and scale, right? See, when it goes here, this one is going to change to yay. And now we have the letter A and the letter N becoming larger and the letter A is moving left and the letter N is moving to the right and they, everything else matches perfectly well. So when you add an animator, you can change the value of the animator and then you can animate the different lines of the range selector. You can add properties to the same range selector. You can add range selectors to the same properties. You can add more animators. You can duplicate the animators. I mean, you can animate each and every letter however you want to animate it. And that makes text animation in After Effects be the most powerful text animation engine that I have ever encountered because I can animate each and every character however I want. But wait, there's more. Let's go ahead and delete those animators. And let's add another animator. This time, let's add it for, say, rotation. And I'm going to change the rotation to about yay. And I'm going to change the range selector so that it goes around only the letter A. All right? So here we go. And maybe this is a little bit too much. I just want it touching the letter N. There you go. We are going to animate now the offset, the offset. So this is how it works. Notice that the left line is at zero, meaning it's all the way to the left. And the end, in other words, the line on the right is at 11%. So that's, that's because of how many characters you have. By default, it's going to divide the amount of characters by percentages. So each letter represents about 11% of the word. So if we take and animate both lines, we can make sure that as the lines move, only one character at a time gets affected, 
but the character changes. That's what offset does. It animates both lines at the same time. So I can start offset at, say, minus 11. And what that does, even though we see the lines here, that is just the display, is that it moves both lines outside of the characters. So right now, my range selector is not affecting any characters. So I can now keyframe the offset, move in time, and change that value to 100, and this is what the animation looks like. So basically, the letters are just toppling each other because that's why I changed that animation to that. Not only that, but if I go to advanced, if I go to advanced, I can change the units to index. So this time, it would be going from letter 1 to letter 2 to letter 3. Three, four, five, six, seven. All right. I can also change the shape of this. For example, I can say, you know, ramp it up and look at the difference now. I can say ramp it down. By default, it's square. Do you see how they stay down? I haven't changed anything else. The offset is still working, right? I can go triangle. I really like that. I can also go round. And finally, smooth. Oops. I can change the ease high and the ease low. And I can even randomize the order. So these advanced uh, sections, uh, uh, you know, always go in there and start experimenting. It's kind of fun. And sometimes you come with these really happy accidents that give you amazing animations. And you just go, oh, <laughs> that's really cool. I don't even know how I did that. And, you know, accept it. Say thank you to the powers that be and enjoy your animation. All right. So. Let's go ahead and delete that animator. And now I'm going to add an animator for all transform properties, everything. Those are anchor point position, scale, skew, skew axis, rotation, and opacity. And I'm just going to slightly change these values to whatever, you know. And oh, I like that. And I like that. And opac let's bring the opacity to zero. But notice that I'm not keyframing anything. I just changed things. Let's go ahead and add a wiggly selector. A wiggly selector. All you have to do is click on Add, Selector Wiggly, and now play your animation. Look at this. Not a single keyframe, and we're getting animation. So how does the wiggly selector work? I'm not going to go through the whole thing, because this is a basic tutorial. But look at this. When it comes to wiggles in After Effects, you always, uh, you're always talking about these random values based on frequency, how often should they change, at magnitude, how much should they change. So frequency and magnitude, how often, how much, always in that order, don't forget. Look at this, amount, it goes from the positive value of 100% percent of whatever we changed on these values here, to minus. So it goes to the plus and to the minus, or from the minus to the plus, right? And you can change and you can even keyframe that. You can say, hey, you know what? Start at zero. Start at zero. And then go to 100 and minus 100. And in fact, let me move those keyframes so that it starts with absolutely nothing and then slowly starts getting all these random values and then I can keyframe those again and then end. I'm just going to copy this zero and paste it here. And then stop. So this is a wiggle that I can keyframe. So it starts with nothing, then it starts wiggling, and then it slowly just stops. All right? So I can also change the wiggles per second. You know, this would be how often. 
this is two times per second, I can make it much slower. I can make it say 0.5, so it changes values every two seconds and so forth. I can change the correlation. Say I want the correlation to be 100%. I'm going to delete all of the keyframes and I'm gonna go back to the default value. And you see how now they're doing the same. And I can say, no, the correlation will be zero. And now they're all doing their own thing. The default is 50, right? 50. You can also change the temporal face, you know, like uh, in here and the spatial face. And you can also lock dimensions on and off. All right, so, you know, you can change the random seed as well. So there is a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, you can base this on words. You can base this on characters, on lines, on characters excluding spaces and all of that. And then you can have it at add. This would be a blending mode, right? Subtract. That's kind of funny. Intersect. Min. Max and difference, all right? So we're gonna leave it at add. If you want to reset, you can, and you see that the reset is actually add. So this is, none of this is too, too bad. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. So last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the animator. Let me go ahead and add a new text on a path. So I'm gonna grab the uh, ellipse tool and I'm going to create an oval here. And now I'm going to enable the per character 3D, right? And I'm also going to add an animator for rotation, all right? So I'm going to go to the path options and I'm gonna say, hey, go to the mask one. And now on the animator, on the Z axis for the rotation, I'm going to change this to a 90 degree, which of course it means I won't be able to read the text at all. So I am indeed talking about 3D text. So now I'm going to go to my path options and I'm going to keyframe this. I'll give it four seconds. I think something like this is good. And I'm going to end my work area here by pressing the letter N. And now I'm just gonna play that animation, which by default, it should just loop. And there it is. The loop is pretty good. I, I just eyeballed it. It's, it's, you know. Now, I noticed that my layer turned into a 3D layer because I enabled the per character 3D. Now I'm going to rotate the entire layer, R for rotation, until I can read the text. Look at that. And look at that. I have indeed 3D text. I can even add a light, so layer, no light. I could cast shadows, I'm not going to. I'm just basically adding a light so that we can see that the lights are affecting the animation. If you wanna change the light, the intensity, the cone angle and all of that, you can do so. And I think I went a little overboard, but that's good. And there you go, there you have it. Congratulations, you have now mastered the art of text animation in After Effects. I hope you had as much fun as I did exploring all of the creative possibilities. Now it's time to unleash your imagination and bring your projects to life with eye-catching text animations. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And as always, feel free to share your work with me and leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below. Thanks for joining me today, and we'll catch you in the next video. Keep animating.